You know what I like doing in my pastime? Reading Reddit. I'm serious, in particular, the Wall Street bets. I mean, you just take a look at this post and also this. These guys make it sound like it's so easy to profit from options. I, unfortunately, never had that type of luck. And having burst multiple accounts since 2008, I think it's time that I share the best ways to screw up an options account and it is my wish that my mistakes will benefit anyone who is keen to either invest or trade in options. Mistake number one, buying short data options. I started my first option trading account with less than 3,000 US dollars. At that time, I did not want to put in too much money, not that I had a lot of money to even begin with, and I was also not sure how options really work and how to properly execute a trade. So what I did was, I paid for a mentor to teach me all he knew about options and I googled the rest. And that, my friends, was how I started my options trading journey. As my options account was very pathetic at the time, hence, I could only afford options that expired in just a few days or weeks. In fact, I thought that since these options were way cheaper as compared to buying options that expired in months or even years, my risk should be lesser. For instance, let us take a look at this SPY call that expires in two days' time. If I wanted to buy the $371 call, it would cost just $317 per position. For a call that expires in 844 days' time, that is two strikes out of the money, I would need $6,050 per position. Hence, at that time, my decision was crystal clear. I would only trade short data options to accommodate a small option trading account. But what I did not realize was that despite being cheap, if the underlying stock stayed stagnant, then time decay would eat into my options value and I would start seeing my options lose value extremely fast. And if the stock were to go against me, then that position would be practically worthless. By the way, before moving on to the next few mistakes, do consider subscribing to this channel as I am making it a point to share options related content as well as personal reflections and mistakes that I have made over my options and stock investing journeys in the hopes that it will benefit anyone new to options and investments in general. My second mistake was buying far out of the money options. As my priority was on quality companies, hence I could only afford far out of the money options as these contracts were way much cheaper as compared to options that were either at the money or in the money. I just assume that if you guess the correct direction, you will still earn from your calls and your puts but maybe just a little lesser. Hence you guys can pretty much guess it. All it took was just a couple of months for me to burn my first options trading account to the ground because firstly, time was not even in my favour and secondly, Options that are far out of the money have a very low delta which means that there is a low chance for that option contract to even be in the money. For discussion sake, let's take a look at the same SPY chain that expires in two days time. A call with a strike of $373 will cost only $232 per position but the one with a strike of $369 will cost $409 per position. Therefore, I had a tendency of picking very far out of the money options, primarily due to the fact that the price per position was cheaper. And hence, my perceived risk was lesser. If only I had paid more attention to the delta of each trade. The delta basically measures how much the value of an option changes given a $1 change in the price of the underlying stock. It can also be used to estimate the chance of that particular option expiring in the money. The call with a strike of $373 has a delta of 0.3393. This means that the chance of that option even expiring in the money is 33%. The call with a strike of $369 has a delta of 0.4878. And what this means is that the chance of that option expiring in the money is 48%. Hence, what I thought was a less risky trade was actually a riskier trade and I was unconsciously stacking the odds of winning against me. Therefore, it was no wonder that I was just losing money with ease. In fact guys, am I the only one making these mistakes? 
Do you guys also use premiums to decide which option contract to enter? Type in the comment section below if you guys have done something like this so that I know that I'm not the only one making this mistake. And now my third mistake was buying options right before earnings. You know, sometimes you just get this feeling that the stock is going to beat its earnings or face an earnings miss. Well, I'm going to be very honest with you. I get that feeling all the time. Hence, I personally really like earnings plays. However, when the stock moved in the correct direction after earnings, I just kept losing money and that drove me nuts. On hindsight, what I experienced was called an IV crush. An IV crush occurs when the implied volatility drops significantly after an event or earnings announcements. Usually before an important announcement or event, there is so much uncertainty and that uncertainty is actually priced into the premiums of the option. However, when the event has passed and there is clarity as to what to expect, in the stock moving forward, the implied volatility of some stocks may decrease very drastically and this can affect the option premium of the stock. My advice to anyone trading options as an earnings play is to always calculate the break-even price. And if you are planning to buy a call, then please check if you feel that that stock can trade above that break-even and vice versa if you are buying a put. If not, then perhaps it would be best to just give that trade a miss. I really hope this video is helping you guys and if it is, please give it a like so as to allow it to prevent more option traders from losing their hard-earned money like myself. My fourth mistake is not position sizing. In the past, I did not have a clear option trading strategy. I treated options more like gambling and if I'm so convinced in the stock, then I can easily commit more than 50% of my trading account just on that one single trade. Now of course, if the trade went my way, then booms, I will see a significant increase in my account value. However, if it tanks, I will not be able to take the loss and I lost count how many times I wanted to just quit options trading due to this very scenario. In fact, come to think of it, each time I profited from that trade, I would just reinvest my profits and initial capital back into another high-risk trade, hoping to grow my account even faster. That was definitely not a sound strategy and a lot of money was lost just doing that. My fifth mistake was not having a clear exit strategy and I always struggled on when to sell my options. What I would do as a beginner would be to hold my losers until the option expires and cut my winners once I earn around 10 to 20%. This is clearly a stupid strategy. Nowadays, I rely on my technical screener market club to tell me when to enter or exit a position. And this helps take the emotions out of the trade. In fact, I have done up a video on how I use market club to time my entry and exits. And I'll put it in the description just below the like button, which you can click on your way down. Okay guys, now that you know some of my mistakes, click this video over here to understand how a Reddit user lost his money on puts despite the stock tanking 8%. I'm very sure that this video will be of tremendous value to you and I'll see you then now.